Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. All right, this is the first video in a very long series that is this semester's course of Applications of Deep Neural Networks. This is the spring 2021 semester. This will be an online course at Washington University this semester. The last semester was online as well as we went through the COVID-19 ramifications on universities across the world, really. We'll see what it looks like in the future. At least for now, we are remaining completely online. I'm really hoping that this, this semester moves a bit more back to things as normal around the world, but we will see. Okay, here you can see the very first GitHub notebook. And if we go back even a page on this, this is my GitHub repository for this course. T81558 Deep Learning. That's the Washington University catalog number for this course. Also, all of this course material is available online. I obviously won't grade you if you're following this along through the, through the internet, but everything's there in terms of being able to, to follow along from the general public. Now, if you scroll down through this, you'll see, you'll see the syllabus and outline here. So here's the syllabus. Everything is divided into these modules. A module corresponds to one week in a normal semester. You can see I have the dates here for 2021. We'll be starting on January 25th, 2021. And there's a link to each of these modules. Each module has five parts. Let's look at module one. So module one, you will see that there is the general information. You'll also see there's an open and collab tab at the very, very top. Colab is a free product by Google. You can also buy Colab Pro. You get a bit more compute power. Colab Pro is, I think, around $10 US per month. I do have Colab Pro. I find it to be worthwhile, but I have another whole video on is Colab Pro worth it or not. The advantage there is deep learning. You really, really need these advanced GPUs, these double slot cards that you put into your computer. And the only thing that is better than a GPU are two GPUs. Yeah, I just keep them on the floor. These are actually old GPUs that I use just to, just to demonstrate because they've got all the right connection. Colab gives you access to a pretty decent GPU. It will take hours off your training time on some of these projects that I give you in this course. So you'll wanna look at Colab and basically clicking that link will take any of these get projects, notebooks that I have here and launch it in Colab. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that and we will be in Google Colab. And here we're in Google Colab. Each of these modules has five parts and it has a video and a notebook. You're looking at the notebook. These are Jupyter notebooks. If you haven't heard of Jupyter before, it basically just lets you mix code and this text that you see. I also have this entire course as a 500 plus page book. You can get the PDF for free. I'll probably have it on Amazon at some point, but I have not quite gotten around to that to that yet so that you could actually have it as a as a printed a printed copy but it's very book like and i encourage you to take a look at that here you can see i'm kind of flipping through the the textbook just it's it's pretty much a a book then i give you some videos here that you can watch on how to set up this environment the easiest is going to be using Google Colab, especially if you don't have the right GPU on your system. And the right GPU is a relatively new NVIDIA CUDA compatible GPU. Types of GPUs that you may want to take a look at if you do want to actually buy a GPU. Now buying a GPU means you then have to build the computer and, and all of that kind of stuff. Look at the NVIDIA 30 series. The, the top of the line is currently 1500 US, which is amazing to me. The, the, compu the GPU that I have in, in my machine is slower than the 3090 and it was 2500 originally. So the, these things get 
get expensive, but even one down from the, the 3090 is I think around $600. So you, within that range, you, you can definitely buy an advanced GPU. If you, and I have an entire video on selecting GPUs. I'll put a link to that in, in the description. If you prefer just to buy something, I'm using a Lenovo ThinkPad P53. Actually, it has an NVIDIA Quadro 5000 GPU in it. So even a laptop, you can get some serious GPU power now available. This is actually not my laptop. I was given some Lenovo technology from Lenovo to, to use for a couple of months with the YouTube channel and they're very, very advanced. There's a number of different lines. Definitely have a look at the Lenovo P series. I've used now one of them and have been quite impressed with the machine. At the beginning of each course, you are part, you'll see this block of code here. I can click the little run button to run it and it is going to actually run this. Oh, it wants me to be signed in. So you have to use your, your Google account if you want to want to do that. I'm not going to do that for now uh, on just this introductory session, but you'll run this code at the top here and this basically detects if you're using Colab or not and that lets the rest of the code function properly. This is the course overview. I modify this course every semester to include the newest technologies in deep learning. You can see some of the things that we'll be talking about here. We will be making use of GANs, of reinforcement learning, convolution neural networks for computer vision. They're falling a little bit from, from favor, but LSTMs for recurrent neural networks and time series, a lot of different things, and looking at how to use GPUs with them. This is how you'll be graded. There's an icebreaker at the beginning that lets the students get to know each other a bit. The, there'll be a, a group selection for the Kaggle. Actually, we're not doing group selection. I need to update this one. As a separate pro assignment, the, the Kaggle project is actually five points higher. Uh, but then there are class assignments. There's one assignment due each week just to make sure that you're staying up to date with all of this, especially since it's online. You don't want to fall behind. I know myself as a college student, I would always, why do today what you can put off till tomorrow? These are all of the assignments listed here. Some are more difficult than others, but most are just meant to show that you are making use of the technology. So a big part of this course is every semester we have a Kaggle competition. Kaggle is essentially like the Super Bowl or the World Cup for data scientists and machine learning individuals. You can see here I've had a number of Kaggle assignments each over the, the semesters past. I create a new data set completely of my own design to let the students each semester compete against each other and see who can come up with the best model for the data. Now this is the one for fall 2020. There will be a new one for this semester. I haven't created it yet. I've got a few ideas. We'll get more into that as the semester progresses. But here is the link to it. This is actually on Kaggle. So you'll be submitting to the real Kaggle website. The point of this Kaggle was computer vision. I gave the students pictures of towers made of blocks. Some had better lighting than others. And they were supposed to predict if the building is stable or if it's not. If you look at the overview, you can see basically this building here is stable. This building is not. There's actually a missing block between those two green ones on the bottom. And as a result, it collapses. You need to predict looking at that building if it's going to fall or if it will, if it will stay up. There'll be more about the Kaggle competition as we progress through the semester. And this is open to the internet. I allow people from the internet to also compete right along with the students. That always makes it a lot of fun. Some of the students really get into this Kaggle competition. If you look at the leaderboard for this last one, you can see some of the student teams here. You can see the top team had 54 entries. So some of the students really get into the Kaggle competition. This is me, your instructor, Jeff Heaton. I 
work primarily in industry. I'm just an adjunct teaching one course here at Washington University. My primary job, I'm a vice president of data science at a large finance company. You can see some of my credentials here. I have a PhD in computer science and I'm a senior member of IEEE and a budding YouTuber. I've got like 40,000 plus subscribers. Never really meant to get into YouTube, but putting these courses on YouTube has, has been growing a steady following, which has been fun. That's me. These are some of the resources for the course, Google Colab. Definitely take a look at that. The free version is perfectly fine to complete everything in the course. Or if you want to install and get this technology running on your local computer, that is certainly supported as well. Now, what is machine learning? Data-driven development, really. Traditional software development, as a, as a coder, I would have been given input data and, and I would write the program code give that to the computer and the computer would give me the output. Classic IT. Machine learning, you give the computer the input data, so I have the input data, the expected output, and the computer learns the program code to take that input and predict the output. Now we'll see other generative sort of models that don't fit this exactly. This is an overgeneralization, but in general, you're trying to have Rather than coding all of this, you're trying to have the machine learn to function as the program. These are some of the areas that we'll work with. Traditional predictive modeling, like you see here, where you have like the classic iris data set. You have the four measurements and you have the, the type of iris that it is. Computer vision, where you're trying to determine what a computer image is. And time series, trying to predict the future, so to speak. Here predicting sunspots, I believe. Traditionally, you talk about regression and classification. Regression is where you're, you're trying, you're taking in input and you're predicting a number. Classification, you're taking in input and you're predicting what class it belongs into. Deep learning, what's awesome about it is the input and output can be anything. The input can be an image and also an image. The input can be a random number and the output is an image. That's what GANs are. A random number creates a random human face. And what are neural networks? These are a type of model based on layers and interconnections between neurons. The luminaries in this field you see in the picture here, uh, Jan LeCurn, Jeffrey Hinton, Yashua Bengio, and Andrew Ning. The first three that I mentioned were awarded the Turing Prize, which is like computer science Nobel Prize for their contribution. Nothing against Andrew Nang. I've taken his course and they're, all four of these guys are brilliant. I consider them sort of the, the luminaries of the field. And why deep learning? Deep learning really lets the machine start to understand the feature engineering and all of these other things that you had to go together. But deep learning won't necessarily outperform traditional models unless you have enough data. As you have more and more and more data, performance will increase as, as you add more of that data. Older algorithms, as it's called here. Now, Andrew Nang, he's a deep learning guy, so this is how academics think a lot. You have what you're working on, deep learning, and what everybody else, older. But, um, and also too, this line does not project out into infinity. It would level off as well. But nonetheless, Unless you have a large amount of data or particularly computer vision type of data or very unstructured data, deep learning may or may not be the most optimal algorithm for you. But for unstructured and computer vision, definitely deep learning is, is where it's at right now. Python 3X is the programming language that we'll, we will be using for this course. I need to update this this little area bit. I do not have PyTorch. I would really almost say TensorFlow and PyTorch are the two right now. And I will update this, this right now. We make use of TensorFlow Curas in this course over PyTorch for two reasons. One, TensorFlow is a bit older than PyTorch. So at the point that I created this, this course, just a few years ago, it was pretty much TensorFlow and Thano actually at, at that point, but the landscape has changed rapidly. 
PyTorch seems to, you, you have to do a bit more typing. There's a bit more code involved in PyTorch that does give you greater control. And that's why PyTorch has seen a lot of application in the research community. However, for those two reasons, I am still keeping this course as TensorFlow Kira's, but who knows what the, what the future brings. Now, software installation. If you're using Google Colab, you're fine. You don't need to install particularly anything. If you want to install it on your computer and it's Windows or Linux, I have some instructions here as well as a video to take you through that. If you're installing it onto a Mac, and Mac, I love Macs, I truly do. But deep learning is not their forte right now. And some new things with the new M1 that the chip, the ARM chip that Mac has released, that may change some things, but the support for that is not widespread right now. The problem is Macs don't have NVIDIA CUDA GPUs available. So therefore, they can't get the performance that you're going to get on a Windows or a Linux machine with a high-powered GPU. Now, if you're using Google Colab or the cloud, who cares? Use a Mac because the GPU is going to be up in the cloud. But I do have the instructions here on how to install it on the Mac without a GPU. I have not tried, I don't own a M1 Macintosh yet, so I have not tried that path yet, but it, I've read some about it and I have a link. If you have an M1 Mac, you may want to try it, but it looks like a complex configuration and I, I probably might try this out like mid 2021. And then uh, once you install it and run it, you can run this check code here. It tells you, and these are the versions that we will be using in this course this semester, version 2.4 of TensorFlow and Python 3.8. All right, thank you for watching this video and please subscribe to the channel so that you get all the updates on this course as it progresses. For students at Washington University, we will have the weekly live synchronous meetings this semester and I'll talk to you more about Washu Canvas and how you get into the system where your grades reside and assignment submission. Thank you very much.